How's everybody doing today? Hope all is well with you. Down here in the tobacco patch today, it's been about three weeks, give or take, three to four weeks um, since we got our, our tobacco in the ground. It's doing great, most of it. Uh, I thought we would we would take a walk through the garden and, and point a few things out, talk a little bit about, about some uh, pests that we encounter with tobacco and what we can do to, to avoid and control that. Here in, in southern Pennsylvania, I've only really experienced two different pests um, as far as insects. When it comes to tobacco, they're very resilient to, to normal pests and you don't have a lot of problems, but two, two insects that, that you do encounter, at least I encounter, that you need to worry about are number one um, are the tobacco hornworms, which will take a look at a plant that's had a little bit of tobacco hornworm damage. I haven't had very much this year, thankfully, but it does usually tend to happen a little bit later in the year. But this is the kind of, uh, kind of stuff that you're gonna find with tobacco hornworms. For myself, I really don't use any kind of treatment for them. I tend to just hand pick them off the plants. People say you can use things like seven and, and other stuff. I try to not use any kind of chemicals on, in my garden if I can help it. And the, the nice thing is, is you can usually tell pretty quickly where the tobacco hornworms are because of, of the evidence they leave behind. If they're also called tomato hornworms, the same thing. The smallest I've seen them is I would say about three quarters of an inch to an inch long and that's when they're very small and they will quickly get I would say about the size of my pointer finger they're massive some of the biggest caterpillars I've ever seen huge big big fat things um, with a horn on on one end of their head and uh, ugly little buggers but they can really decimate a tobacco plant so when you see evidence of one gently just just go through your plant peek around you know they tend to be on the undersides of leaves not always and and just pick them off and, and pop them or throw them to your chickens or whatever you want to do um, there are there is a natural predator against those it's a certain type of wasp i don't know the name of it but there is a wasp that will lay eggs on those specific caterpillars that will will actually eat their way through the caterpillar and kill it but don't rely on that you want to want to pick your your um, caterpillars off as soon as possible another one that i would say is even even more of a problem that i've encountered that i see quite regularly are aphids. Aphids are a tiny little itty bitty bug that, I'm not a scientist, I don't know all the details, but they essentially lay their eggs. I'm gonna to try to find a couple for you because I did find some today I'm gonna to have to treat. Here we go. Oh, I don't know if I can get this to focus. They're just little itty bitty guys and you'll find, when you find one, you'll usually find a lot. This is actually not very many. If you let these untreated, I mean, they will just, you'll find thousands of them. And what they do is they, they pierce the, the, the layer of the, of the plant and they suck the juice out and they, they live off of that. And they multiply and, and they just will suck the life out of a plant. They won't necessarily kill it, but they will, will definitely inhibit growth and, and cause problems. And the solution is pretty simple. It takes some time. Um, but it's chemical free for the most part and it's not too complicated. The best way to get rid of aphids in my experience is dish soap. Get yourself some plain old green Dawn dish soap. There's not an exact amount that I use. I would say it's around about one to two tablespoons per gallon, maybe three tablespoons if, you're, if they're really thick and you wanna get rid of them quick. Um, and that works great for, for killing aphids. You just wanna, you'll just find where they're at and just spray them down. And that's it. And what that does is there's the aphids themselves have a waxy, thin exoskeleton, and the Dawn dish detergent essentially breaks that down and dries them out. And it'll kill them within no more than a day, usually even just a few hours if it's hot and sunny out. The only adverse effect that I've seen is um, one year I had a really bad infestation and I was treating some of my plants um, like two or three times in a week and I did notice a little bit of drying out of the leaf. It didn't kill it but it did kind of scar the leaf a little bit after probably five or six treatments and and I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, I This I just use if I have a couple little spots that I want to spray. Typically I will use if I have a serious problem I will get a, a little pump pressure sprayer and hit them with that and usually one application will knock out the aphids 
and the adults, you can Google the picture. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at editing. I could could insert a picture of one right now if I was, but they're, they kind of look like, the adults look kind of like a Katie did, but they're smaller. They're reminiscent, what I, th of, they remind me of a Katie did. They're lime green colored, and they're, but they're much smaller. They're probably a quarter to around a third, a half the size of, of a Katie did. And yeah, if you see one of those guys hopping around and you can, you can tell what it is, give it a squish for sure, because they'll lay a lot of eggs. Um, but yeah, otherwise, tobacco looks beautiful. Everything's going great. Um, I did want to touch on, on staking. If you might've noticed here, I have a few plants staked. A few varieties that I, that I grow occasionally do need staking. Uh, African red being one, staghorn being another. Once in a while, you'll just get ones that they grow a little bit too fast. The, the, the tops are getting bigger than the, than the root system and you will, you will have some start to tip over. They won't kill them. They'll continue to grow, but I do like to like to stake them up. This guy I just staked about 20 minutes ago. Probably by the end of today, he's going to be stuck straight up. Um, yeah, that is something that we do experience as small growers is, especially if you get a really heavy windstorm or something, you'll, your plants can blow over. Uh, the benefit that large-scale commercial farmers have is when you have 20 acres of tobacco plants like this, they kind of act as their own wind barrier. They'll help hold each other up. But when we're we're growing these smaller plots of tobacco, it it definitely exposes them more to the wind. Um, my other plot up there is growing well as well, and I have another another small plot down that way. Two small plots down that way. They're all doing great. Well, you guys have a great day. Hope all is going well with you. Don't forget, if you want tobacco seeds, take a look down in the description. I have some links to, to my uh, eBay store and, and the seeds that we sell. So take care.